All right, guys, so episode four, uh, season eight alone, just came out last night. Uh, I wasn't in this episode, but I wanna just briefly give you guys my thoughts on what I saw. Uh, there's some interesting things going on, and the first thing I wanna talk about is Teresa's pit house, which is amazing. I am seriously impressed with her ingenuity and what she's got accomplished out there. That is a tremendous amount of work, um, you know, out of, all the seasons, all of the shelters that have been built on this show, in my opinion, that's got to be the most impressive. I mean, Roland's shelter uh, in season seven was super impressive, but <sighs> Teresa's pit house is just spectacular. Uh, I wanna build one just for the heck of it uh, because it looks so cool. Um, but there's been, you know, on the forums, especially Reddit and places like that, it's people talk a lot about that. Like it's a huge energy expenditure. You know, how does that play into a long-term strategy? Should she be finding food rather than focusing all that energy on a shelter? And she's talked about that. You know, she's talked about, she understands that it's a big energy expenditure up front, but as the season goes on and it starts to get cold, she's, I think she's planning on that energy expenditure averaging out. You know, she's putting in a bunch of energy up front, but when that temperature drops, she's going to be expending much less energy processing firewood and just keeping herself warm in general. You know, just, just keeping your body temperature up when you're exposed to the elements takes a massive amount of energy. And so by putting in all this energy up front, creating a, a, a well-insulated, um, basically bomb-proof house, um, you know, she's banking on not having to use that energy later in the season. Um, we'll see, you know, I think I understand her strategy for sure. Um, we'll just have to see how that plays out in the long term. But, you know, as far as like the, the quality of the shelter, that thing is super, super impressive. All right, so the second thing that, that comes to mind is Teresa's accent. And I'm, I'm so glad that they put in there her explanation of what's going on. She talked about this um, at the orientation camp. And, you know, again, on the forums, people get super judgy on those things. And it's like, they, you know, they're, they're picking at her accent. Um, and so I'm glad. I'm glad they put that on there. And I... I actually, if I'm immersed in a culture, whether it's Hispanic or, you know, whatever, if I'm there more than a couple of days, I will pick up that accent, just, you know, not even trying to do it. I actually put in, uh, put up some videos here a little while back where I'd been in South Louisiana, like way down in the, in South of New Orleans. And I was there for, I think two weeks and I had picked up, unintentionally just picked up that accent. So I, <laughs> I mean, if I had spent a bunch of time in the UK, I'd be talking that way too. So Coulter's bear encounter was another, like I was laughing. Um, it's a, it's a, it was a very serious situation, but it's also funny because he was, didn't have any clothes on. And here comes this bear walking down the creek. And I think, you, you know, Coulter is a good dude. I, like, I really like Coulter. He's a super good dude. Uh, I like his attitude. He's just, you know, he's enjoying himself out there. He, he doesn't let things get to him too much. And Coulter lives on an island in Alaska. He's got brown bears literally in his backyard, uh, sees them on a daily basis up there. And so he knows, he understands how to handle himself when there's bears around. And I, I think that his biggest concern there was his boat. He, he was super excited about that boat. And with, with a bear, you know, if the bear had come up the beach and his boat's sitting there, if the bear's interested in it at all, it, it's nothing for that bear to completely destroy that boat. And, and he's putting so much, he's banking on that so much to support him that for something to happen to that boat would be, I mean, it would be devastating. Um, so that was an that was an interesting scene that they put in there with the bears coming up and i'm i'm glad that he was able to eventually turn that bear and get it away from coming down the shelter and, or coming down the beach and potentially uh messing up that boat because i i really want to see 
how he does with that thing where, where he's able to get off the beach and do some fishing. We saw him doing some hand lining and some jigging uh, and had, I think he had some success uh, doing that. So um, we'll see how things go later on in the season uh, as the fishing gets tougher and tougher. Nate, Nate's another just super good dude. Um, spent a lot of time with Nate before we went out. Uh, and just a side note, I think he's coming out to Idaho uh, where I'm at right now. He's coming out this summer to help with one of Jordan's survival uh, classes that they're doing out in the wilderness. And uh, I think he's gonna do that later in July. But when he comes out, we're gonna try to meet up and hopefully I can get him on one of these videos uh, and just get his thoughts on what's going on as well. Um, but Nate's dock, you know, looking at that on, you know, from the perspective removed, it looks like it's a lot of work for just a little bit of gain, you know, just getting out 25 feet. But, and, and Nate talked about this, when you get out just a little bit, uh, you can get to a little bit deeper water because it, a lot of that shoreline, I know it was this case on my, uh, on my site, but it's just so gradual. Uh, a, a taper out there that getting out just a little bit, you might be able to get to 10 feet of water. Whereas if you're standing on shore trying to cast, you know, you're only making it to five feet of water. And the difference there, you know, those, a lot of times those fish would patrol just in that, you know, seven, eight, 10 feet of water. And so just being able to get out that little bit of extra, could potentially make the difference. On my site, uh, where you saw on episode one where I caught that fish, I had a little rock point that kind of jutted out into the water and I was able to get there, luckily without having to build anything. I had access to some of that water that was just a little bit deeper. But I was, you know, the, the notches, the V notches and the dovetails that he used to put that together, that was very, very clever. Um, most people would have tried to just uh, lap those things and used up a bunch of cordage to to bind that together but I was I really like that dovetail type of situation that he used uh, and that's something I think Jordan made in season six he made his ladder using that very same technique you know you take your uprights you cut these V notches out or these these triangles out and then your cross pieces your steps you would take those and make them into triangles which uh, then fit into those things um, very, very good building technique when you're trying to use just the materials that you have on hand. So Rose was also in this episode. Um, Rose seems to be having a, a hard go at it. Um, and it's hard to tell from the, the, the footage that they're showing really what's available on her site. Um, from the, what I've seen of her shoreline, it looks like it's super shallow, uh, which would be a tough situation. Um, and it's, I, it's hard, like I said, it's hard to get an idea of really what she has access to because it's, we're just not seeing a lot of her sight. Um, but hopefully Rose will get something figured out here before too long. Um, yeah. And then we have Jordan's cabin. So the whole time I was watching Jordan build that, the, all, the only thing I kept thinking was Dick Prenicke's film uh, from the, whenever he put that together, Alone in the Wilderness, I think it's what it is. But if you, if you like watching Alone and this type of stuff and you've not seen Dick Prenicke's film, you've got to watch that. I, the first time I ever saw it, I watched, it was on VHF, I watched that thing back to back like six times. I'd put it in, watch it, I'd rewind it, I'd watch it again. I mean, it was such an awesome film. And, and Dick Prenicke was just, the craftsmanship that he put into everything was absolutely amazing. And Jordan's got that same thing. I mean, he's an amazing craftsman, he's a builder. Um, that cabin was just, the notches, the, the fit that he had on those logs, the door, the door latch, the hinges were super impressive. Um, but I was, I was super impressed with that. Um, Jordan left in this, in this episode and some of those last few scenes of his was, um, I mean, absolutely heartbreaking. Um, as a father, I can't, you know, I'm about to tear up now. I can't imagine what, you know, he and his family, uh, have gone through, um, losing his daughter like that but 
he had talked about it, you know, in this uh, in this episode, but he was just trying to keep busy, you know, and that's that's super important because it keeps your mind occupied. And when you, you know, his mission, I, I think, was that cabin. And, and when that cabin was complete, you know, he kind of, I, I think what happened is he kind of lost that mission a little bit and that allowed, uh, man, that allowed all of those things to come back. And Nikki in the post show interview, um, said something about it. Like you're, you're alone with your thoughts and that can be, you know, when you have things like that, that, that weigh on you, that can be incredibly, incredibly difficult. That can be more difficult than any physical challenge that you will ever face out there is yourself and, and those thoughts that come in those times. So, you know, I, I get it. I, I completely, I completely get, you know, how something like that can, uh, can kind of wreck you out there. Um, but I, I really felt, I really felt for him. So I think I covered everything that, every major thing that happened. I'm probably leaving something out, um, because I didn't actually take like physical notes up there, uh, when I was watching the show. I need to start doing that. Um, but anyway, towards the end of the show, in the preview for episode five, which is coming up next week, uh, it looks like I might have got into a little bit of deer sign, so that's exciting, and we will see how that turns out next Thursday. And so next Thursday, before the new episode comes out, I'll have another video. I'm not sure what it's going to be about yet, but it'll come out, uh, we'll say, 4 p.m. Pacific, so do the math. I'm not sure what that is uh, in the other time zones. Um, we'll cover something, uh, and then we'll see what happens on the episode, and then just like this one, on the next uh, next day, Friday, I'll give you my thoughts on that. And again, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead, and at the risk of offending the snowflakes that get offended by me asking to subs you to subscribe, I'm gonna ask you to subscribe so you can stay uh, updated on the videos. And we will see you guys next Thursday. Peace out.